Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome today to the Black Hall, this amazing private car collection here in Germany, which today we are going to head down and explore. And in particular, we are going to hear two of the noisiest cars that you can imagine. Downstairs, you can spot the Porsches, the AMGs, the 4x4, the 6x6, some Lamborghinis, a Senna GTR, but that AMG GTR is rather akin to a GT4 and I gather it's pretty noisy. We're gonna hear that. We've also got a few more lined up, plus the Novatech Aventador SVJ, which I can tell you right now is going to sound spectacular. So let's head on downstairs then and go and take a look around this amazing collection here, the Black Hall. I often talk about how every car collection is always unique, the way the cars are presented being as much of a thing as the actual cars contained within. Now the lineup downstairs is pretty spectacular and you can imagine the name here comes from the way it's presented, this mysterious look with the painted walls, the dark curtains and the floor as well, but there's some fantastic soft lighting which is always crucial to making cars look their very best. Now where I am at the moment upstairs as we make our way downstairs is a bit of a lounge chill out vibe up here seating area overlooking all of the cars again with some soft lighting tv naturally but let's come on down where there's a bar underneath to have a look around this lineup which of course has a heavy mercedes amg focus but mixing in some very rare very special cars all of which have incredible number plates just look at that on the aventador sv a car that i've seen previously at cars and coffee over in munich meeting with the guys who have kindly invited me today to come and have a look around and share this amazing collection with you. So I'm not entirely sure where exactly we should begin. Maybe a whistle stop tour before we go through some of the quirks and oddities and modifications and things that have been made. So we've got the new 911 Speedster, the Heritage livery. They've only made 1,948 of those in total. Next to it, we've got the 991.2 GT2 RS. Then of course, a car that stands out to me, the SLS AMG Black Series in Himalaya Grey, the original colour of my car as well. I've also seen this, this was at Cars and Coffee too. We've then got an AMG GTR Pro in the launch, Selenite Grey Magno with the lime green stripes, one of only 750. Then we've got a regular AMG GTR running on HREs, the SL65. This was actually the first car of the collection, hence it retains a pretty solid spot here. And alongside it, the significantly more beastly G500 4x4 squared, face to face with the G63 AMG 6x6. I think there are less than hundred of these at the moment in the world and probably not a lot of them here in Germany either. Next to that, back to the GTRs. This is a GTR Roadster, one of 750. This is a very rare thing. This is the Audi R8 Performance Parts Edition, of which they only made 44, wearing the full Performance Parts kit on the R8 V10 Plus. Then we get to the beast of the green hell, the green hell Magno AMG GTR, except with the GT4 front end, GT4 rear end, and an exhaust that we're going to be hearing very shortly. We then got the GT3 RS from the 991.2, the Visac package, carbon bonnet for example. Next to that, a Corvette Z06, quite unusual actually over here to see a Corvette. I know obviously everywhere in the USA, but very rare here in Europe. We've then got the McLaren 675 LT Spider, one of 500 MSO options on this car we'll take a look at as well. And of course, the Novatec Aventador SVJ, the full Novatec package and a thunderous exhaust system. Then in the middle, I touched on the Aventador SV, one of 600 of the SV coupes. We have the Senna GTR, one of 75 of the race car variants of the McLaren Senna. Not exactly a common thing to see, bringing a flash of colour as well alongside some of the others here in the collection. And of course, as I mentioned, we've got this bar area in the corner underneath the upper lounge at the Black Hall, which is a really quite cool setup. It's different, it's unique. I've not seen a collection displayed like this before, and I think it's fantastic. So let's pick out some of the highlights quickly. For this generation of the Speedster, which I actually was lucky enough to drive recently with my friends at Dulac Cars, they made this heritage design livery. So things like having the Speedster logo in gold around the side, having the traditional old school style interior, and of course having the numbers and livery around the exterior. But you've got that 510 horsepower, naturally aspirated flat six at the back, the manual gearbox, and clearly quite a special car, especially if you look back at the history of collectible Porsches. That is right up there at the top. 1,948 of them launched in 2008 
2018 at Porsche's 70th anniversary, hence 1948, the year that they built their first car. Continuing through, this is the Visac package of the GT2 RS. So you've got the magnesium wheels and the carbon bonnet with that central stripe over the top. Of course, very stripped out interior. Interesting observation I've made about the SLS Black Series is that it has the aero kit with the wing at the rear, of course, as mine does, which was actually an option, but it doesn't have the flicks around the front, which makes a kind of interesting look. Of course, you can tell it's an SLS Black Series because of quite how wide the thing is versus the standard car. But I guess rather like my garage, SLS Black Series alongside GTR Pro, two very different cars, despite being a generation apart and only a few years technically apart from Mercedes AMG, just a part of the AMG collection here. But this was the launch specification for the GTR Pro, which took away the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8, changing it to a 4 litre bi turbo V8, slightly less power. There was 631 horsepower in the SLS Black, 585 horsepower in the GTR Pro, but looking very nice in the launch spec, to be honest. I actually considered almost going that way myself. And alongside it is the non-pro version. I think that's the way to call it, the original AMG GTR, the beast of the green hell, as it was originally launched in that color, Green Hell Magno, as it's called. So the GTR is then alongside the SL65, which of course they did make a Black Series version of, but the SL65 with its V12 bi-turbo, which is such an epic engine, sadly no longer with us as an engine in the AMG lineup, but something pretty cool nonetheless. Now the G500 4x4 squared is much akin to its predecessor, the G63 AMG, not wearing an AMG badge, despite being the V8 engine. This car, I mean, it's for proper off-roading, right? It's quite a, an interesting drive. I drove one out in the dunes in Dubai, actually, which was kind of good fun. The 6x6, absolute monster, the proper beast. When AMG and G, I suppose, introduced this, I think the whole world was like, are you serious? Did they actually manage to make that thing? It is gigantic. It is 3.7 tons, which means it comes basically into the weight of a truck as opposed to a car, which is a kind of interesting fact about it, but pretty monstrous, especially in this configuration. Obviously, you've got the exposed satin carbon for these massive wheel arches, the huge numbers of wheels. You have the ability to inflate and deflate them from some controls up in the roof of the thing as well and obviously the flatbed at the back, which houses a spare wheel, which I can tell you are exceptionally heavy. Next to that though, the AMG GTR Roadster. Fun plate AA585 for 585 horsepower from the engine of this, one of 750. My GTR Roadster is going to be joining the collection very soon as well. That's in the satin black, looking pretty menacing. I think it's a great car overall. And in fact, just talking about plates very briefly, obviously SL65, these two are cool, the 4.2s and the 4.1s on the raised up beast. You can see the number plates are really special. I don't know too much about the performance parts. I mean, I remember it being introduced, quite a, a lot of additional parts. For example, the carbon splitter, the carbon flicks, new wheels, carbon Audi Sport side skirts, this rear spoiler as well, pretty distinct design to it, and these flicks around the side which smoothen out the air towards the back. And this was one of the launch editions. They made 44 of them when they actually launched the performance parts range, parts that they sell independently as well. The AMG GT4, as you can imagine, has a bit of a, a bit of an upgrade. It's also been blacked out, the grille slats at the front, also the Mercedes star is normally brighter uh, and silver, but obviously it's got that new carbon fiber front splitter. It's got these covers, which are about directing the airflow through and the canards and flicks, and a massive rear spoiler as well which comes direct from that GT4 car, from the AMG GT4 car, fitted to the road car, which is a little bit crazy as well. Then next to this, the GT3 RS Visac package. Visac again, saving weight, carbon bonnet, for example. The regular one doesn't come with a carbon bonnet. It comes with a normal bonnet, as is hanging up on the wall. And I always find that kind of thing really cool. This car was one of the first to be delivered, hence why it didn't have the carbon bonnet at the time, and it was upgraded a little later on. What else do we have here? Well, AA one on the number plate, which is just insanely cool. To me from the UK, if you had that plate, it would basically be the most expensive UK number plate. So I find this awesome to actually see. And the SV in this color, I think it's probably Rosso Bia. Maybe it's Rosso Mars. No, it must be Rosso Bia. Pearlescent metallic red just looks super, super cool. I think the SV is probably one of the most special of the different Aventador generations. There we have the Senna GTR. The Senna GTR and all of its craziness. I mean, race car, right? Literally so much more aggressive than the regular Senna. When you look at the, the flicks and the aero, towing hook attached already, but based around the regular car, just kind of massively longer and much more 
track purposeful than the already very track purposeful car with that extended flat splitter, all the cutaways, but also fairly civilized. They might, I don't know if you'd remember, but I went out uh, on the road with a friend in his Santa GTR out in uh, Miami in Florida with Iconic Motors, and that was pretty mega. And it wasn't, it wasn't that antisocial. It wasn't that crazy uncivilized. Although when you look at the shapes here, there's a lot going on. What else do we have? The 675 LT Spider, one of the 500 Spiders. We've got things like MSO louvres. We've got an MSO paintwork on this car. But interestingly, painted things like the side vents. Those are often carbon fiber. Also the end plates down at the sides, but obviously very much my spec. Blue, silver wheels. This is what I like. This is, this is really smart. Very nice and very similar almost actually to mine as well. Then we've got the Novatec Aventador SVJ. Now this has the Novatec package. So as you look around at things, for example, like the new engine cover with this higher piece in the center, these additional vents that you have over the side, the extra aggressive side skirt that you have added on there. Around towards the front, we've got the new bonnet with airflow that comes through it, and also a new carbon splitter around the front. This car is Verde Alcea, I think they called it, and it has a red interior, the red accents in the interior to match with the red calipers. Obviously, we've got the red center locks on this side of the car and the red painted SVJ uh, on the logo. But the big thing about this is gonna be the sound that we're gonna hear from these, which we will do in just a moment. And I gather it's going to be pretty deafening. So we will hear that in just a second. But how cool is this collection? Absolutely incredible. It is time to hear the true beast of the green hell. Let's hear the GTR starting up. Now that was quite loud, but this is a different level. Let's take a listen to the Novatec Aventador SVJ 6.5 liters of naturally aspirated V12. Let's hear this coming into life. Start when the valve 
coming back upstairs then. The view here at the Black Hall is spectacular. All of the cars, and those two satin green cars in particular, which are not exactly discreet, both exceptionally loud, but what an awesome way to present the cars with the soft lighting from above, definitely getting some inspiration here as to how to come up with something unique. And I've not seen a collection displayed like this, and I'm sure in the future, there are going to be even more things joining to be seen as well. So a big thanks to the Black Hole for the opportunity to come and visit and take a look around. Do go and follow over on Instagram. The link is down below to see even more of the cars here in the collection. So I hope you've enjoyed the look around. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.